What you're about to see is the surveillance from Walmart of Joseph as it started the last few minutes of his life. I did not put the whole thing in here, just the first few minutes, and this is my first attempt at censoring certain things. Just in case anybody's wondering, I purposely removed the audio. These are the last few moments of my brother. And that's all you're going to get to see. Testing this just to see how high the damn resolution is. to how many people in the media were kind of smirking when they did this story. It was almost like they were like, hey, look at this guy carrying a gun, just proves carrying a gun doesn't do any good. You know, it was almost like they were enjoying the fact that this guy lost his life trying to save other people. They weren't being very respectful of this guy at all. And that kind of bothered me. Now, I've seen they've backed off a little bit of it lately. I think they kind of got shamed into it. I think they got a lot of negative response from the way they were acting. But at first, they seemed really snarky about it. Which I don't understand, especially when they start saying, well, he made things worse and he could have made things more complicated for law enforcement when they showed up. If someone runs into a burning building to save a child and they die doing so, well, that probably inconveniences the firefighters that come later because they have to deal with this guy and the child now. But the media wouldn't be like, oh, this asshole ran into a building and got himself killed and caused problems for firefighters. They'd be like this valiant brave hero rushed into a burning building with no thought to his own life and sacrificed himself to save a child. They wouldn't go any deeper than that. They would just portray the guy as a hero. But because there's a gun involved this time, they want to demonize the guy, even if it's kind of a backhanded demonization. Now, as for what Joseph... And finally, for what I think of Joseph Wilcox himself, you know, I've always thought that it doesn't matter how many battles you win or lose in your life. It's that you're willing to fight. And one thing you can say about Joseph Wilcox, whether he did everything perfect or not, he was willing to fight. He was willing to fight for himself. He was willing to fight for others. Win or lose, if you ask me, that alone makes a person a hero. A hero sacrificed his life, and his name was Joseph Wilcox. However, before we begin, I would like to honor Mr. Wilcox with his very own danger check about him as a man and as a concealed carrier. I'm not gonna go into exactly what occurred on that day in Las Vegas, Nevada, because it's not necessary. Today, this is not about what occurred, but about what Mr. Wilcox did and why he is a hero. And make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, this man, this concealed carrier, died in the line of duty. Mr. Wilcox was 31 years old. He was considered a a good young man who was currently trying to find work as a web designer. He was a quiet man, a man who was considered not very political, but definitely believed in his right to defend his Mr. life. Wilcox was just an average man. Later on that day, he had planned to take his arm at the worst offenders. The worst offenders in this tragedy are the various reporters and talking heads on numerous networks in the media who have essentially smirked and smiled and sniveled and giggled at the fact that this man is dead, that this man gave his life. And it's not the fact that he died, but the fact that he was a gun owner that made them so happy. Let me ask each of you a question who think it's amusing and funny that a man gave his life in defense of his fellow man. Would you have laughed at this young man if he had ran into a burning building to save a child and died in the process? Would that have been funny? No. It would have been tragic and the man would have been hailed as a hero, as he is by the Las Vegas police, and appropriately so, because the man is a hero. I have a question to each of you journalists out there who have so delighted in another human being's death simply because you disagree with them. Let me ask you this. Have you no honor? Have you no honor at all? Now I'd like to say a few words in honor of Mr. Wilcox's heroic sacrifice. I didn't know Mr. Wilcox. I never met him. I didn't know his family. 
but another type of man that he was, though. He was a man who gave his life for his fellow man. He was a man who, in the last seconds of his life, after he drew his weapon calmly, precisely, and without hesitation, moved to confront him. Those are the actions of a true hero. He wasn't looking for a fight that day. He was looking to return his motive and to go take his nephew's his duty called, and he did not return. That is the sacrifice that he made that day. It is a sacrifice that many concealed and open carriers, myself included, have considered may very well happen to us one day. That we may go out one day, be called to duty, and we may not return home. Mrs. Wilcox's mother said that she continues to wait to see her son walk through that door again. That's all she wants to see. Hi, Joseph. Well, two years. So much has changed. I think about you every night. I toss and turn. Things go through my head. I miss you. I wait for you to walk in the door every day. I keep hearing it's going to get better. I'm not going to miss you as much soon. It's not. It doesn't get any better. Matter of fact, it's getting worse. The impact on Olivia and Hannah. <laughs> Bless Hannah's heart. When she sees me falling apart, she's right there. I can bring it up to Olivia, but she's like Jack, where they listen, but it's hard for them to talk about. I don't blame them. And on the other side of it, when I hear someone talk about you, bringing up funny stories, I can't get enough of it. I miss so many things about you. For whatever reason, the news media loves to ask, what do you miss most? There isn't anything I miss most. I just miss you. I can remember so many mornings I'd wake up and make breakfast and bring yours. And you'd have it eaten before I even got you a napkin. I can still remember that gut-wrenching feeling I got when you didn't come home that day, when I knew you weren't coming home. Okay, I'm gonna try and hold it together. I remember that day like yesterday. I can tell you everything that happened. Worse, I remember talking to Grandma about you. And her taking my hand and telling me it was time for her to go. That she couldn't stay in a world that was so cruel to take you. It 
there's so many things I don't understand anymore. I don't get it. Everybody keeps telling me I have to go on. Well, I do go on. But it doesn't stop the pain. It doesn't stop the heartache. It doesn't stop anything. I'm trying. I'm really trying. Everybody keeps telling me you're in a better place. And I'm sorry, I just don't agree with that. The better place for you is right here. Not only that, they don't know what that place is like, if that place exists. The worst part is when everyone says I should feel you or know you're here. I don't feel you. I don't feel your spirit. I don't feel grandma's. I don't feel anything. I know I miss you. I know I love you and I know I want you to come home. Your room is still here. Your computer. Oh my god, your computer. It's so hard to imagine. It's two years old. Nothing's been changed in it. Jack does keep it up. He does sit out. He watches over your phone. He updates everything. But I'm really scared that one day something bad's going to happen. There's nothing we can do. Your friends talk about you, what few you had, what few you kept. You're loved and missed by so many. I still think about you coming to the house. I still think about the silly things you did. I remember watching 24 with you. That at first you couldn't understand why I liked the show so much. And then you been watched it for seven days straight. I remember that. You came out, you take a break, you breathe a little bit, you go back in. And I remember watching it when the last four shows were on. And I kept watching it thinking, I wonder what he would have thought. I remember watching House with you. You'd watch it in your room, I'd watch it in the living room. And we'd both go crazy in the end. Another show came on. I think you would have liked, but they took it off after the first season and the first cliffhanger. The shows you and I used to watch and share, the stupid videos you used to show me in your room when I'd call you out to look at something online, and the stupid laugh you had when you found it was funny, and I knew you would. The pain in everybody's face, the tears. They don't stop. Anyway, Joseph. Before I can't talk anymore, I love you and I miss you, Joseph. I wish you were here. Hi, Joseph. How you doing? I miss you so much. I can't believe it's been two years. I can't believe what happened. I saw the video. I saw you. I still don't believe it. I'm still in such disbelief. You know, I think about you every day. And I think about the night before, when you came over, you, Jeremy, and I were outside. Jeremy was on the back porch, and we were on the rocks. You went to take your gun out of the holster, but everything came out, the holster, the whole thing. You lifted it up with, with it in the holster still. And you said, the novelty of this has worn off. Joseph, can you please explain if the novelty of the gun had worn off? Why did you have it two years ago when you went there? Why? I think about that a lot. I think about you every day. 
I miss you. I'm waiting for you to walk through the door. I think about when anytime I went over to your mom's and you were awake, you'd come out of your room, ask me what what I was doing there, your mom and I would say I was there for her, to talk to her, whatever, and he said, oh good, enjoy and come in, come in the room. And your mom was like, uh, I need to talk to her. Oh, you can wait, mom, enjoy and come in here, I want to show you something. You showed me videos, whether it was a movie, trailers, any videos, uh, you had, I want, you had me watch stuff. No, I didn't mind at all. <laughs> Did not mind at all. You showed me um, things you made on the computer. I forget what it's called. Uh, I just had it. But what you built on the computer. When you built a computer on the computer. Uh, a wrap, your gun you built. You were making a rap for it. I mean, you showed me so many things that you built on the computer, and they were, they're all wonderful. I remember when you, you had such patience with me when you tried to, uh, teach me the drive stick shift and you were teaching me you didn't take no for an answer you finally said and join you're still gonna have the headaches come on I don't care how you're doing right now you're going I was nervous and you were there for me I miss seeing you I miss being doing stuff with you. I want to make new memories with you, Joseph. Go out and do whatever. You show me more videos. I need to... We all need more memories with you. We all need you here and now. Tell me where you're at so I can pick you up. You and Grandma. I do things. I clean this house. And when I do, I'm hoping it's up to yours and Grandma's standards. And when I fall short, I get upset. I remember so much. And I have three shirts I wear a lot because they're the shirts that when you worked at Albertsons, after I bought them, you said that they look, they were like, and I think it was after you left Albertsons, you said that they were just like the uniform that you had at Albertsons. So I guess you could say wearing these shirts makes me feel closer to you. I think about, I think, well, this is just like Joseph's. I will wear them till I can't wear them anymore. Till they get 10,000, till they get holy. I miss you, kid. I really, really miss you. We all do. I don't know what to do. I do stuff, but I don't know what to do anymore. I really don't. I can't say the G word. I can't say... I say... I can't say G O N E when it comes to you. I talk to you, talk about you in the present tense. Like, you're 33 years old. You're young. <laughs> I'm gonna be 53.
also want for my birthday is for you to text me, call me, come over, anything. I want you and need you back like everyone else does. Why did you go in? Why did you bring the gun? The novelty of it wore off, remember? Why? I watch videos of you. And I have to smile because it's you. And it's so cute, the videos. I still have the recording when you recorded and you sent it to Jeremy and I. You both suck monkey balls. <laughs> I miss you, Joseph. Please come home. Please come back. Please walk through the door. Or tell if you're in... And yes, I think about you being in witness protection. And I wait for someone to say, okay, you need to change your life. So I could, so we could see you and grandma again and be with you too. In another state with another name, I, I'm at, I, I need to know what mountain to go to to pick you two up. Please come back. Please. Two years. It, no. 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 I love you, Joseph. I love you so much. Please come back home. Please. I love you, kid. Always will. Always have, always will. <laughs> Come back, please. Please. Well, I put off recording this for a while, actually a long while, but I figured I might as well get it done and over with. What was I doing two years ago? Oh yeah, I had a backpack full of stuff, because my brother and Jeremy were supposed to come pick us up to go swimming, but it didn't work out that way. He was supposed to pick up me and my daughter, his niece. Not his nephew. He doesn't have one. But apparently the news can't get the simplest of details correct. Unfortunately, instead, I get a call at about 11.30 from Jeremy telling me some psycho just walked into the Walmart, fired off around with a gun, screamed some complete bullshit, and everybody's trying to panic and run out. Just open after him. And now we get into that. Of course, I started packing my magazines into a backpack. Didn't know what the hell I thought I was going to do. Got my gun. Waited for a ride, which I don't even remember how long that took to get down there. Again, didn't really think I didn't have any clue what I was going to do. Because by the time I got down there, obviously the police were going to respond a hell of a lot faster than I was. But after walking around for a while, trying to get an idea of what was going on, since the whole parking lot was taped off, we went home, I went to attempting to locate his phone since we used T-Mobile. So his phone was still in there. Of course those crackpots and mom the man actually decided to put out something saying a female had been shot in front of the store. As screwed up as it is, I was kind of relieved because that means my brother was not dead. And unfortunately when the information got corrected, they shut the hell up. 
But unfortunately, I did not hear anything until the next morning. When I kept calling this one online, I had called it in the morning. Unfortunately, he's not the one that answered it. And that's why I heard the news that my brother, Joseph Wilcox, had been killed. And unfortunately, I now possess this firearm. The price on it was way too high. It was the cost of a human life. Now, this video, in case you haven't noticed, not for or against gun control. I'm not using it yet to push that. Unlike those people. But anyways, I'm not sure what else to say other than I lost my brother two years ago today. It has not been fun. On that note, Joseph, thank you for that. Now I've got two other houses to fucking deal with computer issues. It's almost kind of like he pulled that part on fucking purpose. Some of the dumbass calls I get. Now, I do honestly understand it's been two years. And I don't quite expect everybody to remember him. I remember what he did or I remember that day. I mean, if he wasn't your family or your friend, you're not, you're gonna show some respect about a death, but it's not gonna be on your thoughts 24-7. I get that. And nobody's gonna hold you accountable for it. That's fine. But this video will contain, uh, I wasn't that new to press, but I didn't, I didn't want them to nail me for copyright crap. But the rest of this video will contain friends and family saying whatever comes to mind. If they choose to talk about two years ago or something else, that's up to them. But that was honestly all I could come up with. I expected this to be just a little bit longer for me. But that did not work out. Now on the two-year mark, almost two-year mark, they did put out some more information about that day. It's easily found from the police. They put out a PDF file, some other crap. Of course, everybody has sent me. I now have that saved on my computer. But again, the only reason I put myself first in the video is to give you an idea of what's coming next. Like I said, it's a bunch of friends and family talking. So, I guess enjoy. Last little thing to all the tough guys, internet tough guys, and all that shit. To all the people who talk shit about him going in instead of leaving, who all made fun of him for dying and for giving a shit. Yeah, everybody has a fight or flight response. Fight or flight. Okay, make sure I made that very clear. To people who ran, that was a flight response. That's fine. It's part of human nature. You want to survive. I get that. To the people who would run and then talk shit about the person who didn't, that makes you a coward. All the shit you talked Saying if he hadn't if he hadn't gone in, he'd still be alive today. Well, that could go for a lot of things. But instead of respecting his decision, you said to be a big tough guy on the internet. Well, it doesn't work that way. It honestly just makes you look like an ass. Hey, Joseph, it's gonna be two years that you're gone. This is probably my thirtieth million video that I made. It's, it's not real that you're not here. It's hard. It, I miss you and I love you. I'm still struggling with it. I think the whole family's still struggling with you not being here and, the, and accepting it. I know we all love you and we all miss you. I think about the times that we, when we were younger, how we used to jump from couch to couch and think the floor was lava, just stupid little things like that, but silly, not stupid, but silly things. I can't seem to keep not crying when I make a video. I constantly call your phone, hoping that you're going to answer it. I know you're not going to, and hoping. I hope you and Grandma are okay up there, wherever you guys are. Hannah's doing well in school. 
We miss you, we love you, she talks about you all the time. It's so hard for her to accept it too, like all of us. I love you and I miss you so much. <laughs>
and she used to love going to school and she used to love going outside and she doesn't do any of that anymore she doesn't like going to school well, she goes to school because she has to but she doesn't like she doesn't like going to school anymore you know not like she used to she used to spend more time at school than at home you know actually and anybody that knows her knows that she used to join every club that they 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 offered that didn't cost me anything and now she's well, I'm lucky to get her out the door to go to school and then get her home without her getting sick on me and but uh, and she used to love going shopping with me and she doesn't do that anymore uh, every time I even bring up the fact of of going to the store she gets physically sick and she can't she physically cannot do it I know a lot of people have made comments of well she's only 13 why don't you make her and I said well you know my uh, my answer to that is I if I make her she, what's what's the point she's just gonna end up sick anyway so you know she might as well stay home you know cuz she doesn't, you know, otherwise she'll be throwing up in the car. But, uh, you know, she's she's growing up and she doesn't have her Uncle Joseph. She used to go, she used to, she used to love going swimming and I, and everything. And I'm hoping to convince her to be able to go swimming this year because she wouldn't, she refused to go last year. Um... But that was just another thing that she used to like to do, and you know. But and I just don't know what to do to help her feel better because she just won't she won't talk about it. And you know, me as being the mom, it's it hurts it hurts me when I can't make her feel better because I don't like to see her hurt or hurting and it's just devastating to me but um anyways and uh, uh Olivia you know oh god anyways um what else was I gonna say I know everybody in this family misses Joseph horribly, and now the holidays are never the same. Granted, Joseph just stayed in his own room and just said, well, mom, can you just bring me a plate? You know, she would, uh, he would ask his mom, he would ask, you know, Debbie, to bring, bring him a plate home because he was just, he just didn't like, he was, he liked to stick to himself, just like everybody else in this family likes to just kind of stay off in their own little corners. But... In the, for the most part, you know, we still miss him. We miss those times when he said, when he used to joke around with everybody and, you know, he used to tell me to F you and F off every time I took a picture. And, it, you know, those are just times that we're not going to be able to hear him say, hear his voice anymore. I mean, uh, you know, and I know his, I know his brother Jack, uh, my husband, misses him very much. And, you know, it's, this family, uh, the rest of the world has pretty much gone on. It goes on and on. And we, we're just basically just living because we know we have to get through the day. But in, on the other hand, you know, it's like we're just going through the motions. Just living, you know, breathing. That's, that's it. And, you know, we're just trying to figure out how to, how to deal. And... People saying, well, he's in a better place. Well, how do you know he's in a better place? Have you ever been there? For real. I mean, I'm not anti-religious because, you know, I believe in God. And I, you know, I want to believe there's a better place after after here. But on the other hand, I've, I, you know, how can we say that he's truly in a better place if you've never actually been to that better place and come back and say, oh, it is, it's, it is so much better than here. I mean, for real. But anyways, um, we just, you know, there's just certain statements that you just don't want to hear when you, when you lost somebody that you care about deeply. And 
that's probably one of the biggest ones right there. Oh, he's he's in a better place now, and, and you know, there. That's just you know, who knows what better place it is. I mean, I personally want to believe there is a better place after after we're dead and gone, but who really truly knows? Anyways. We just, we just truly miss Joseph, and you know, I, and I know Olivia misses Joseph. And Olivia goes to school every day. Um, she wears her necklace that has some of Joseph's and her Nana's ashes in them, because um, th three days after uh, Joseph's memorial service, of course, uh, uh, Grandma passed away but um that's another time but she wears her necklace every day to school and if she does not wear that necklace to school she ends up having a bad day and ends up being sick and ends up calling calling first to come pick her up so we so she makes it a point to wear her necklace because she knows her uncle joseph is she knows that her uncle joseph and her um and her grandmother are with her her great grandmother are with is with her um around you know watching over her and you know and she keeps she's got two pinwheels that she keeps on my on my balcony and every now and then she'll come out and say uh she say oh, oh there's uncle joseph driving n driving nana nuts with his pacing because he used to pace back and forth all the time no matter what he was doing on the phone or making something to eat or whatever it was he was always pacing so he's she you know when especially on a still day when there's no wind and the pinwheels are still moving she'll come out and say and one pinwheel will be, will be perfectly still and the other one will be moving she'll come out and make a comment like oh there's uncle joseph driving nana nuts and um and it just has to put a smile on my face that she knows that they're watching anyways um and you know that's pretty much it i'm not sure what else to say but that we miss him and you know even though the rest of the world is pretty much uh seems like n hardly anybody even knows who he is but we do and we'll never forget who he is and we'll never forget the type of person he was and is he was he was one of a kind and we will and we we did and will always love him and miss him that's it. So it has been two years since my uncle has passed, and it has impacted my life. My uncle has passed because when I go into his room, there are flowers everywhere, and I turn to his computer, and I can just imagine him sitting in his chair asking me why I'm in his room. But then I blink and all I see is a picture of him and his ashes on his chair. I also remember my grandma getting really annoyed because he would be on the phone or just be talking to her, pacing back and forth and back and forth. Um, June 8th of 2014, he was supposed to take... Well, I was already at my Nana's house with my cousin, and he was supposed to go pick up my dad after he returned something at Walmart. Um, and he never really came back. Um, when we used to go swimming, he would put the phone, his phone, gave us a waterproof phone, you would put it like under the water and stuff um, and just film me and my cousin like swimming and he would just have a blast doing that. I love and miss him and I wish he was still here and that's about it. So it's been two years since the senseless deaths of two Metro police officers, Igor Soldo and Alan Beck, by two deranged lunatics who had no regard whatsoever for life, for law, or anything. But I want to talk today about a brave civilian who lost his life 
trying to stop the chaos that had ensued on that day, Joseph Wilcox. Now, I never had the pleasure of meeting Joseph. I only knew about him through his brother, Jack. But what I do know about him is that he was a very strong supporter of the Second Amendment, as should all Americans. Because people like him, law-abiding citizens who carry, can be the difference between you living and you dying. I also know that he was very protective of his family and those that he loved. Now, I've heard all kinds of things about Joseph from people who didn't know him, from being crazy to how brave he was for putting his life in the line to stop what could have been a complete disaster. I have talked to people about this day a few times, and I've found because of his bravery on that day, they have purchased handguns and are going or have already taken their CCW class, myself included. So although an innocent man lost his life, trying to ensure the safety of those around him, I can assure you that he has played a big influence in the lives of many in this city, mine included, and across this country. So bless you, Joseph. You're gone from this chaotic world, but you will never be forgotten. Well, today is June 8th. Two years since the passing of Joseph Robert Wilcox. Being the hero, losing his life trying to protect others, and did protect others. When I heard about the two officers and the female victim in Walmart being killed, I felt, oh my God, it's like thinking of them, what they went through in their families and what they're going to be going through for a long time. And hearing that it was a female victim at Walmart and as bad as that sounds, being relieved because I knew all of the women that I've known uh, friends and family were all accounted for and safe But then finding out the next morning going on Facebook Finding out that it wasn't a female victim there. It was a male hero Joseph Robert Wilcox Knowing that he put himself in between the innocent people and the danger of that uh, gunman and the videos that have been released and we've gotten to see over the last two years of how he reacted instantly he didn't think of himself he thought of everyone else he wanted to protect people and he did there's nothing that could ever change the fact he died a hero he helped so many and got so many people out bought a little bit of time but he'll always be hero and he won't ever be forgotten he'll he will always be known for his heroic acts and trying to save as many people as he could boy will never forget him Hi everybody, my name is Tamara, aka Lady Phoenix, and today we're here to talk about Joseph Wilcox. It is June 8, 2016, which marks the two-year anniversary that Joseph Wilcox has passed away. Back two years ago on that day, was probably one of the most tragic days that I could ever really think of. Not only did we lose Mr. Wilcox, we also lost two Metro officers who I knew to be good people. You know, they weren't terrible people. And the stories that I heard about Joseph, you know, he wasn't a bad person either. And he basically, you know, stepped into the line of danger and ultimately sacrificed his life so that others could live. Uh, I think that if he hadn't stepped in, the, the casualties at the Walmart would have been way higher 
than what they were. Which, in turn, two years later, resulted in me starting up a web page, which, you know, was for fallen officers, but Joseph Wilcox was mentioned and is on the, what we call the heroes list. You know, he's right up there up top. Because he may have been a civilian, but he had the heart of a cop. You know, he went in there and he made the ultimate sacrifice. You couldn't, you just couldn't not remember that. You, you can't ever forget that. You got to appreciate that there are people out there like there that, you know, would just walk in in the face of danger and not even think twice about it. It takes a lot of heart to do that. Therefore, he basically became a pioneer and it, he himself on a personal level just you know, with him, you know, in, had a lot of influence because I really respected what he had done and it made me step up more, you know, it made me become more involved and more aware that there are some really bad people out there that believe in stuff and that they end up using it to do really, really bad things. You know, this was something that didn't need to happen. It didn't. But in that tragedy, again, it made me become more active. I mean, I've got a website. I pass out pins to the officers. You know, I make memorial bouquets. I even gave some stuff to his family and, you know, I've become more bolder, more outspoken, you know, I step up, I stand up for what I believe in, you know, I'm not afraid, and granted his death was a complete tragedy, and one that could have absolutely, you know, been avoided. If people weren't as dumb as they were, but unfortunately, that's what happens in life. And here we mark the two year anniversary. And we just kind of stop and, and we have to thank, you know, God for putting people like that in our lives. You know, somebody that would risk it all. For a bunch of people he didn't know and you know to his family it's not easy to you know lose a brother a son an uncle but they should always be reminded you know that he gave the ultimate sacrifice therefore you know self-love And hopefully they know, you know, his efforts were not in vain because this really opened a lot of doors for a lot of people. Like I said, people are becoming bolder. I became bolder. I became outspoken. I started standing up for what I believe in, you know, and other people are starting to follow suit. And it's really important that he always be remembered for what he did. Hey, this is in honor of Joseph Robert Wilcox. He took him about two years ago, took him away from us. He, was a, he died a hero. They called him a hero. I'd rather him be here with us and y'all not know him than y'all to know him as a hero. However, you know, in honorance of Joseph, I carry on a few things that he used to do. Like he used to play Diablo 2. I uh, 
started playing that game and got addicted to it. And um, I made a few characters for Pathy II. I can't do the Pathy II because his account's still up, but I can't do a Pathy. So I made me a character, Pathy Azan. You know what I'm saying? She's up there. She's doing bell runs and stuff. Like he taught me. But um, and I got mad love for him, mad respect. I really truly miss him. He was one of my ace boon coons, like a true friend. I I, re I rarely have friends at all, but he is a true friend on my behalf. And speaking, he became a family member. That's how close we were before his passing. And um, I got locked up during his time of passing, so I kind of like blame myself for the uh, his demise because I wasn't there to kind of like try to help him out with the thoughts of running up in Walmart. I ain't gonna run up in Walmart alone. I need everybody in every session. You know what I'm saying? One in electronics, one by the guns, one by the bikes, one by the motherfucking groceries, one by the <laughs> clothes. I don't y'all don't understand. But, you know what I'm saying, if I was to run up in there, I would make sure I had somebody with me so I would have been able to let him know, like, wait, hold on, before you make your move, let me assess the situation, and uh, we probably would have died together, because I would have been like, you know, you shot him, I'm going to shoot you, type shit, you know what I mean? But uh, I don't even talk about those, they don't even deserve credit for, I don't even give them names, you know what I'm saying, because they're monsters, straight monsters who took them, but... Um, other than that, we I go to school, ITT Tech. He liked to make his computers go good. I mean, he built his own from fries. I can't stand fries items. They don't last long for me. But he made a nice computer, you know what I'm saying? A real live gamer computer for him and every other game. Uh, all the high tech shit is in his computer. It's old now, considering, you know, every six months, new software or hardware comes out a new program comes out so his computer's pretty old because we've never changed his room his room's still the same he still has his computer he still has his bed he still has everything you know and i really try to be there for his family members like his mom his sister his aunt <coughs> and everybody that's uh close to him because he rarely had friends I, i'm just one of the selected few that was considered as a friend other than that man i just been going to school i'm getting good grades in honorance of him you know so i can keep up that he's my motivation to keep going moving forward you know and uh hopefully <laughs> we can get everything going good after that though you know what i'm saying just hit you can always hit me up if you uh looking for him you can find him on facebook uh is like again his name's joseph robert wilcox he's got a memorial page his brother jack wilcox uh also he represents uh, jack represents uh gun safety it's guns and run run and gun i think it's called um y'all can check that out um on Facebook, he has a blog too as well. Um, on YouTube, you can check that out on YouTube as well, because uh, his brother been really doing a lot of things, you know, with gun safety and. <clears throat> Other than that, man, I'm just I really miss my I really miss him to the fullest. I miss him beyond anything, but um, we trying to keep our head up, keep afloat. I know we up there looking down like, yeah, keep up the good work. And that's what I got to do. So uh, right now, I'm going to go ahead and show y'all uh, the game Diablo 2. So that way, y'all can see that I do do things in honorance of him. Let me get back at y'all in just a second. Okay, we back. Um, sorry about the, fl the flip frame or the, the freeze frame real quick and flip to a new script. But yeah, I just go ahead and go ahead and show you guys this uh, thing that I got going on with uh, Diablo 2 so you guys can see that I... I
trying to get the screen in there. I don't know if y'all see my hand or not. I'm trying not to show it. As you can see right now on the screen, you know what I'm saying? Y'all see a pathy dragon. Of course, I go by dragon all the time. So I had to put my tag on there. But as you see, I got a pathy. I got Neve, which is heaven backwards. Cleo, which was my original character, which was a necro. A pathy now that he's the new ladder, ladder character. And my uh, ascended dragon, my new sorceress but as you guys can see you know what i'm saying i really do a lot of things that's in honorance of joseph um <clears throat> you know normally i do bell runs or something like that but you know i'm just showing y'all a little something i'm gonna go here real quick you're probably gonna stick me in uh one as as like seen I got people who wants me to invite so you know first things first I always get my helpers out here you know what I mean get the helpers out there and then I got running around with my little bolts and shit killing shit like, Killing everything. <laughs> I'll be playing with these people. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all was able to see that, but I just got attacked. I need mana. I just been shot at right now. That's me throwing that little lightning bolt. Yeah, she's pretty strong right now for this level of a character. I just, uh, you know, like I said, I do this for my brothers, you know what I mean? Just right now on the screen, you know what I'm saying? Y'all see a pathy dragon. Of course, I go by dragon all the time. So I had to put my tag on there. But as you see, I got a pathy. I got Neve, which is heaven backwards. Cleo, which was my original character, which was a necro. A pathy now that he's the new ladder, ladder character. And my uh, ascended dragon, my new sorceress. But as you guys can see, you know what I'm saying, I really do a lot of things that's in honorance of Joseph. Um, <clears throat> you know, normally I do bell runs or something like that, but you know, I'm just showing y'all a little something. I'm gonna go here real quick. You're probably gonna stick me in. Uh, one as as like seen I got people who wants me to invite so you know first things first I always get my helpers out here you know what I mean get the helpers out there and then I got running around with my little bolts and shit killing shit like, Killing everything. <laughs> I'll be playing with these people. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all was able to see that, but I just got attacked. I need mana. I just been shot at right now. That's me throwing a little lightning bolt. Yeah, she's pretty strong right now for this level of a character. I just, uh, you know, like I said, I do this for my brothers, you know what I mean? Just, this game, remember, there would be days that go on and he would not get off this game. So I kind of like pick that up too, so. That's what I do, right? yeah, destroy everybody. Just one lightning bolt, kill everything inside. But yeah, again, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all caught all that, what I was playing, which is Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction. You know what I mean? We just got to keep that thing going. Anyway, I um, got to send this out. That's me throwing that little lightning bolt. Yeah, she's 
she's pretty strong right now for this level of a character. I just, uh, you know, like I said, when I do this for my brothers, you know what I mean? Just, this game, remember, there would be days that go on and he would not get off this game. So, I kind of like pick that up too. So. That's what I do. Right here. Destroy everybody. It's one lightning bolt. Kill everything inside. But yeah, again, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all caught all that, what I was playing, which is Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction. You know what I mean? We just got to keep that thing going. Anyway, I um, got to send this out. And uh, happy birthday. Happy Memorial Day. You know, um, you really keep me humble. Every time I think I'm about to go flip mode or something, you right there, bros. You know what I'm saying? You right there in my head like, hey, man, uh... You don't want to do that. And one thing about Joseph that I honor the most is my bros is he keep 110 no matter what. If it's going to hurt your feelings, your feelings will be hurt. And that's all, you know, it will be. But he know no other way. You'd rather keep it 100 than not to keep it 100 and then y'all motherfuckers be on some other shit. Like, why you lying to me and stuff like that. But anyway, I got to get going, you know what I mean? I got to go to work today, you know. I just paid my dues and shit so I can get back on the map <clears throat> and get back on my life, you know. And put it back on the right track. But, uh, again, mostly everything I do is for my bros. So once you guys get back at them, you know what I'm saying, I want y'all to never forget Joseph Robert Wilcox. Do not forget him. Because he was not only a hero, but he is a representation of what we all should do when someone goes out of their way and think that they have every right to take another person's life or to endanger another person's well-being. This is Ray signing off. Y'all can find me at Ramon Young on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can hit me up there. I don't really do Instagram, Snapchat. I don't do all other stuff. I just do Facebook, and I barely do that. But y'all can hit me up on that. Just, you know what I'm saying? Send me a quick little message. Let me know. The about Joseph that I honor the most is my bros is he keep 110 no matter what. If it's going to hurt your feelings, your feelings will be hurt. And that's all, you know, it will be. But... He know no other way. You'd rather keep it 100 than not to keep it 100 and then y'all motherfuckers be on some other shit. Like, why you lying to me and stuff like that. But anyway, I got to get going, you know what I mean? I got to go to work today, you know. I just paid my dues and shit so I can get back on the map <clears throat> and get back on my life, you know. And put it back on the right track. But, uh, again, mostly everything I do is for my bros. So once you guys get back at them, you know what I'm saying? I want y'all to never forget Joseph Robert Wilcox. Do not forget him because he was not only a hero, but he is a representation of what we all should do when someone goes out of their way and think that they have every right to take another person's life or to endanger another person's well-being. This is Bray signing off. Y'all can find me at Ramon Young on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can hit me up there. I don't really do Instagram, Snapchat. I don't do all other stuff. I just do Facebook, and I barely do that. But y'all can hit me up on that. Just, you know what I'm saying? Send me a quick little message. Let me know uh, how y'all know me because I, just, I, I don't add friends unless they have logical reasoning to this. But uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Keep him in your prayers. Keep his family in your prayers. Um, keep your families in your prayers. And if y'all not praying, get started. Because it's getting it's getting late. We're running out of time. I know y'all hear that all the time. My grandma used to tell me, you ain't got much time left. So I used to try to do everything I could, get it all out the way. But that's not what she meant. She meant make sure all your affairs are in order. Because you never know when that time may come. And when it comes... You will not be prepared to leave those that love you behind and you're not there to see the effects of you leaving them, what it will do to them. Oh, this is uh, 
Raymond J. Young signing off. Peace.